Tracy, we're back again, and you know what that means. Uh, I did not get my millions from the GameStop stock bonanza. How about you? <laughs> I did not get millions either, but you know, there's still time to buy. Maybe. <laughs> I definitely have lots of regrets right now for not being a millionaire. That's all right. By the time people are listening to this, I'm sure we'll we'll either look even more foolish or like wise seers for not having bought them. <laughs> Very true. Soon people are going to be posting about how they lost their entire life savings off of one bet on GameStop going YOLO on GameStop. Ten million dollars on GameStop right now. <laughs> Welcome everyone to the retro. My name is Tracy. You can follow me on Twitter at Lady Elite. And I'm Robo Cell. You can find me on Twitter at Robo Cell. <laughs> we have a pretty fun show today. Yeah, today uh, during the subtweet, we are going to be talking about the new White House site and what it was built on top of. So place your bets now on what kind of tech stack they used. In the, the water cooler. We're going to be talking to Revel and Donovan West about TypeScript, about learning how to code, and just being a family that just loves to code together. And in the double click, we're going to be talking about accessibility and the new WCAG standards. So we have a lot to cover, so let's get started. In this week's subtweet, uh, we're going to be looking at the conversations we've been having online and give you the information that you need in order to have better, smarter conversations about these topics. And today, Tracy, we are talking about the most important political news to come out of the United States, and it is not Bernie Sanders' mittens. It is the fact that with the new administration in the United States, we have a new WhiteHouse.gov website. Can you believe it? Have you been to the WhiteHouse.gov website yet? No, but how did they get that done so fast? Like it's day, it's like one week, one week. <laughs> yeah, I think I think Biden took his hand off of the Bible and the website went up. So it's actually, I would, I think people have been clamoring for a uh, blog post about this. People want to know how this gets online, uh, but, it, but it is up instantly. And Amazing. what really caught my eye about it was that Wes Boss was tweeting that it had nearly flawless uh, performance scores on Lighthouse. And to be even more surprising, you know, what would you imagine that this was built on? Do you think it was React? Do you think it was Svelte? Web, like, WebAssembly. WebAssembly, yeah, that's right. They coded it in the bits directly. No, it was <laughs> released in WordPress. It's oh a my WordPress God. Site. And it's 100% perform, like 100% Lighthouse scores all over. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there was some some wow. quibbling. I saw some blog posts going around in the WebPerf community looking at some uh, some font preloading strategies that they maybe could look at for some better perf gains. But you know what? Nothing is ever perfect. But what I think is pretty amazing is that, you know, the, the internet kind of responded in a few different ways. Some people were sort of jeering over this, saying, oh, WordPress, I thought they had real software developers over there. And, you know, other people were kind of celebrating what this meant for the web, that people you know, can build successful, performance, scalable, uh, you know, pages and, and components and, and applications with a wide variety of, of resources. And I mean, just what a, what a time to be a web developer that, you know, you can build things in React in WebAssembly or WordPress and be extremely effective, which in, you know, whichever approach this, you take. This, this kind of like says something about the new administration though, right? Because you know how people joke that Biden's so old? And it's like, oh, you're so old, you're going to be ineffective. But the website, you know, if we consider WordPress old and, you know, no offense to WordPress developers, but sometimes it's like, oh, it's done on WordPress, right? If we consider WordPress old, I think this is a very good proof that, hey, guess what? And you don't have to use the latest and the greatest and the hottest and the coolest to be like so amazing. Absolutely. And it really continues sort of a stream of conversations that have been happening recently about similar topics. So another thing that came up, uh, or just comes up recurringly is Rails. A lot of people think Rails is this ancient technology that nobody uses. It's dinosaur tech, avoid it at all costs. And, you know, the people over at Basecamp, you know, DHH and his, his group just continue to innovate, continue to build on top of it. You know, we have good friends over there at uh, Dev2. Uh, ben and his team love Rails, build on top of Rails for their stuff, for DevTube, for, for uh, Form and all that. And, uh, you know, Airbnb 
just had an IPO not too distantly in the past. Um, you know, made quite a lot of money there, and their entire you know, you know back end ecosystem is all built on top of Rails. So, what I love about this is that, you know, don't let anybody ever tell you that your tech isn't cool enough, as long as you deliver a performant experience for your users. And I think that's what people need to understand from these conversations is, you know, you can have your fun, you can have your jokes, but at the end of the day, if you're out there and you know WordPress super well and you can deliver sites quickly to clients, you're gonna have a never ending stream of work. <laughs> if you're a Rails developer and you know Rails really well, not only can you build new applications and help scaffold new companies, but you're gonna have tons of work. Web development and all development is vast and there is enough to go around. WordPress is gonna be the new thing. They're like, obviously everybody should build everything in WordPress. We're gonna start seeing like massive WordPress migrations <laughs> there you go. with like yeah. all this press. Um, but, you know, I, th I think also, you know, if we look at Rails for an example, right, which I cannot believe people are saying, like, Rails is old tech because I feel like even five years ago, it was still, like, a hot thing. So, I mean, come on, people, <laughs> right? But at the same time, um, you know, you look at what the JavaScript ecosystem is doing as they get older, you know, with things like Redwood, with things like Blitz, and you're starting to see... I mean, all of these things are inspired by Rails, right? Like a lot of the stuff that we see, this whole like, um, you know, configure, uh, convention over configuration is all inspired by the Rails community. So we're just doing the same thing over again. <laughs> Absolutely. And, you know, it's funny, though, because we say doing the same things over again. And, you know, there's that famous meme, right, that uh, Silicon Valley bros reinvent busing or, you know what I mean, like just with every new startup. Uh, the joke is that they've just reinvented something that's already existed. And so, you know, in the major frameworks like the React world, the Angular world, uh, a couple of years ago, we were kind of all client side. Then all of a sudden, isomorphic JavaScript started being a phrase people started saying that became uh, server side rendering to an extent, which became sort of static site generation and then became even more strong server side rendering, which was like entirely server side rendered. And what a lot of people have sort of been poking at and having their fun is saying, oh, look, look at the frameworks reinvent web development from 20 years ago. Welcome back to the party. And, you know, I really like the what Sean said, Sean Wang, a Swix on Twitter, who is sort of saying, you know, you shouldn't be seeing this as a reversion. Don't think of this as oh, we've given up on the world of client-side rendering and all the new advances we've gotten from these frameworks and we're, we're running back to the web developments of, of, you know, that we used to have. Instead, think of it as an evolution, right? People pursued the furthest boundaries of client-side rendering and now they're heading back to get the advantages of server-side rendering with many advances in, uh, of the approaches and understandings that we've gotten from these frameworks. It's a remarkably exciting time and honestly, um, I'm super stoked for old tech in 2021. I think we are gonna see, as you said, with Redwood, other types of technologies, I think with the server-side rendering, later with Remix in the React world, the server, <laughs> the server's sexy again, and I think that's what's exciting for 2021. It's so funny that this show is called The Retro because we're talking about like retro, you know, like vintage stuff coming back or whatever it is, and so funny. Cool. Well, definitely check that out, everyone. And again, let us know your thoughts. I mean, what do you think of the White House website? Do you think it was a good idea to do a WordPress? And by the way, that's how it got up so fast because it was done in WordPress. Absolutely. <laughs> um, do, you, do you think it's amazing? Do you think, um, you know, uh, Biden made a bad decision or Biden's people made a bad decision to do it in WordPress? Uh, let us know in the comments below. Hi everyone and welcome to this week's Water Cooler. And today we have Water Cooler with actually two people. We have Donovan and Revel joining us. Hi. Hello. Good to see you all. Yeah, it's super special. You. Good to see you, Tracy, and nice to meet you, Rob. Yeah, nice to yeah, have you here for nice this one-on-one on one on one. On one. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually a four-on-one. <laughs> um so sure on one, one, one three on one well two two on two there you go yeah that's two on two. there we go <laughs> um so do you guys want to introduce yourselves real quick sure 
Uh, I guess I'll go. Yeah, go. Uh, <laughs> Donovan West. I um, React developer, uh, you know, Twitter idiot. Um, I don't know. Just, you know, I used to work for American Express. I'm the uh, spread love guy. Spread love guy. Hashtag spread love. <laughs> Um, I'm Rebel Kahlberg West. I'm 12 years old, and I got into the coding kind of community when Dad taught me, uh, where encouraged me to learn Scratch when I was uh, really young. And then I kind of got into coding React, and I did a few talks at a few conferences. And now I'm learning TypeScript. So um, tell us a little bit about TypeScript. Are you loving it? Do you hate it? Well, I well, yeah. I you start first because you're the yeah. one who. Yeah. No, I of... I love TypeScript. I use it every day. I uh, use it in my job. Uh, but you, I do you didn't a lot actually of... learn it. No. Since a little while ago. Yeah. Um. Maybe beginning of 2020. Uh. Started doing all my open source in TypeScript. Kind of converting all my old open source into TypeScript. Uh. Found that I loved it and wouldn't live without it. So I said to Rebel one day, "Hey, let's let's learn TypeScript together." I was like, "Okay, you know." <laughs> Dad sort of showed me the fundamentals, explained how it can be used. I, I, I liked it. I thought that I, I was pretty amazed by the fact that I like everything to sort of be clean and neat and or like in order, right? So when I realized that you could make it so that all your open source packages already came to typed for people to use very easily, I got really intrigued because like I sort of like when everything's nice and easy to use and it seems and it's it's so miraculous to me to type everything so that that's really what got me motivated and i'm really excited to learn yeah i think the thing that we say a lot about typescript is the idea that it's just so much easier for people who are starting web development to learn how to code better because it gives you all these guardrails right it's like you're missing something by the way did you do this and so it's like you know, you're, you're yeah. you kind of have somebody telling you what to do. Um, one of our friends, uh, Ben Lesh, he wrote RxJS and they actually converted everything over to TypeScript a few years ago. And they realized they had a lot of errors in the code that they didn't even know about until they right. did the conversion. Well, I always say wow. that with TypeScript, uh, when you go to run your code, you don't run your code to see if it works. You run it to see if it works as expected. Yeah, there you go. Right, because you know your code works when it compiles. And I also find it it's easier for beginners to use other people's code if that has been typed and they have TypeScript, because it sort of mm -hmm. shows examples and says, you know, oh, this is supposed to be a string and helps you, you know, use functions better and things like that with, you know, either less look at the documentation or even, yep. you know, that it. That's why also JS Doc. I liked a lot because it was like another thing that puts more information into a package sort of ready to go. I agree. That's what I like a lot about, um, you know, I think even with TypeScript, if you uh, can't sell people on the fact that it gives them fewer errors, I think you can often sell them on the fact that the IDE, the integration with their code editors is so great. Like not yeah. having to constantly go to the documentation sites to not have to memorize all those array operators or the dom properties to just have that in the editor is just it speeds you up so much i think that's overlooked a lot so that's a great point yeah well it's funny so i actually used to be a c-sharp developer doing desktop applications uh in the old school .NET days how do you, um, how do, you do that that's yeah cool. it's yeah, it is really cool. I, I had so, to learn that. <laughs> yeah, so you know, one of the things that I loved coming from C Sharp is I loved um, TypeScript a lot because it really felt very similar to me in a lot of ways. A lot of the same things I liked about C Sharp, I felt TypeScript added to JavaScript. So I'm curious, you know, now it sounds like Revel, you're getting into maybe some Unity development using uh, C Sharp and things like that. I'm wondering if, you know, experiments in TypeScript have helped you maybe learn C Sharp a little bit better as you've started to pick it up? Well, yeah, um, I, I haven't actually learned much into C Sharp yet. So I'm, re I'm really just sort of going on. Like I haven't, the, the way that Unity Dev works is, you know, you have individual scripts for, you know, individual kind of components and I haven't gotten very far into it. So I haven't, you know, called 
you know, another function from a different function yet or anything. I, I've mostly just sort of learned how to put, you know, Unity's um, native functions inside other functions. So I, I haven't really seen it reflect too much yet, but I can see what you mean. That's awesome. I mean, and it's just a testament to Unity too, that, that you can maybe be doing cool things without necessarily having to know all of the innards and the ways that all those things would necessarily have to call each other. Yeah, because like instead of having to create a main script with a bunch of different functions, it's just you apply a different script to a different object or something, which really helps speed up learning and creating new games and stuff. I've been watching over his shoulder while he like moves a moves a block and it, when it runs into another block, it explodes, things like that. And I'm like, I, I wouldn't even know where to begin. And he's, you know. I would. <laughs> That's amazing. Are you speaking at any conferences this year? Uh, no, I don't have any plan to. I, I don't really have any big project yet, projects yet, except kind of learning TypeScript that I would have anything to talk about. But I think, you know, after, especially because going into the pandemic, you know, all the conferences sort of closed down and stuff. And it started to get a little more, you know, I was sort of staying at home and doing some things with dad. And it, there was less... You know, I, w I was less public to where I didn't really come up with any new projects to do, but I I could come up with a conference to do this year. This act it actually seems fun. Yeah, we now could. that I'm learning TypeScript, I think it would open up to a world of whole new possibilities for apps that I should that I could write that would really help me write them faster to where I could come up with some better things. Well, it could be fun. We could uh, we should consider that. We've always considered doing like a a dad son yeah, kind of talk, but we're doing it here. <laughs> <laughs> we never have because he usually gets top billing and I'm, I'm cut out of the whole thing. Oh my God. How much fun. Well, I love it. And it was so nice meeting you all. Yeah. It was nice to meet you. Yeah. Well, I mean, meeting you all. Yeah. Yeah. Silly. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. we, met in, we met in New York. Didn't we? For the first time, didn't we actually meet in person in New York when you were here? At I think it was New York. It was the first one. Yeah. It was yeah. at, um, that one conference. Full stack? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm yeah. just sitting here not knowing anyone. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> anyone. That's, when you revel. <laughs> when, you're, when you're around Tracy, that's how you feel. Yeah. <laughs> and I just like goes to more conferences because he actually has a job. Yeah. Well, so, yeah. You, you, know, need, you, you could get a job. How? <laughs> you could. I'm sure somebody I'm out 12. there, will, nah, they'll hire you. Well, no, I'm legally hired, but I could be like, hey, write me a website. I'll give you some money. <laughs> right? But, like, that would sort of be private, you know, transaction, like cash. <laughs> well, no, okay. old, cold, hard cash. It's non traceable, you know. <laughs> well, um, I did forget to ask one question. Where can we find both of you online? Sure. Uh, we're both on Twitter. Both I'm, on Twitter. I'm at, at Donovan, D-O-N-A-V-O-N. I'm at, at Revel CW, R-E-V-E-L-C-W, Twitter and GitHub and a lot, few other things. I don't know. But yeah. Cool. Awesome. Well, again, thanks for joining us. Yeah. Well, thank you. It's been great. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, on this week's Double Click, uh, the part of the show where we look at interesting or cool new technology or libraries that have just dropped, Tracy, we're talking accessibility. What do you think about accessibility? I love it. Are you talking about the, uh, the WCAG 3.0? Yeah, the WCAG, so the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, just released their draft 3.0 standards, which are really cool because I have used the version 2 standards a lot. Like, I am by no means an accessibility expert, but those guidelines are so amazing at understanding the things that you need to do and then giving you the exercises and the materials you need to be able to actually do it. It has always been a gold mine for me. And these uh, new 3.0 standards, um, they're really trying to aim to make this a more approachable thing. So they're writing it in plainer language. Um, they wanna make it so that people that are not necessarily deep coders can kind of understand the guidelines and have an intuitive sense of it 
which might be extremely important as people continue to raise lawsuits related to accessibility. I so, was going to say, this is just making it easier for lawyers or trolls <laughs> to sue people. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, you know, you got to take the good with the bad, but holding people yeah. accountable, always a positive thing. Um, and they just really want there to be more user need oriented documentation and more examples. So I think overall, if you've ever used the uh, documentation and you found it difficult to use, this is definitely a time to check back in and kind of see where things are. Uh, I'm sure they would love feedback uh, if there's anything that is um, out of place or maybe a little bit unclear. But if you've never used these standards, you absolutely have to run out uh, and take a look at the examples because there are just great practice in building these accessible tools uh, using the examples they give. I mean, they'll lay out for, you know, say you want to do an autocomplete box. It'll say exactly what every key press needs to do at every point in the life cycle of that, that component, it says what the properties need to be. Um, and I've worked with people before to port this to view, port this to React, and really help people practice accessibility. These are a goldmine for getting up to speed on accessibility. So it is a great day in the accessibility community and a very exciting time for everybody. So did they, I mean, when you say new guidelines, is it like a new set of standards or is it improving on the standards? Like did any new standards come out? Like, hey, now this is what you should do with X? It's a great question. You know, to my understanding, I don't believe that there's anything extremely substantive change. Like, I, you know, where say something went from being what was previously like known as like a double A standard to a triple A or something along those lines. And in fact, actually, interestingly enough, that triple A, A double A standard is going away. And now I've completely misplaced what they now call it, but they have a new set of standards. It's like gold, silver, and uh, bronze or something like that. So they're even trying to change that nomenclature because it wasn't even clear to people like, is A good? Like A is a good grade, right? <laughs> but I need a double A? What about A plus, you know? And so they're trying to move again to things that are more understood. So I would suspect that while there's probably refinement with these standards as people expect web technologies to behave subtly differently or certain types of interactive experiences are more prevalent now, more streaming video, things along those lines than maybe there was in the past. Um, I wouldn't expect there to be anything uh, earth shatteringly different um, where something you were doing before is now absolutely critical or something that you were spending a lot of time and money doing on before now they don't think is important at all. So I think all the same things are still important, but hopefully these guidelines are more clear uh, and a little bit easier for people to figure out how to actually implement and, and decide whether it's something they need to pursue on their own project. So yeah, super cool development. Amazing. Also, developers out there, if you're bored and you're thinking about what blog post should I write, I really should write a blog this year, right? Um, you know, talking about these WCAG things and kind of the new new implementations and or new changes or maybe even new, um, I don't want to say new features, but y'all get what I mean. <laughs> um, you know, it's a great thing to document this stuff. And again, just kind of spread more accessibility within our ecosystem. So great find, Rob. Yeah, yeah, great. Yeah, and definitely, hopefully you turn those blog posts also into conference talks. Yeah. It's not nearly enough uh, getting into accessibility conference talks. So hopefully to see you out there on the speaker circuit sharing the good news soon. Yes, and also if you do end up writing a blog post or speak at a conference about this, definitely tweet myself or Rob um, so that we can share the love with you guys as well. We would love, love, love to hear about the exciting things y'all are doing in the community. Well, that's all the time we have left for the retro. And if you enjoyed this show, make sure to smash that like button, hit subscribe, or do we say smash subscribe, whatever it is. Um, definitely let us know who you'd like us to interview or interesting topics that you'd like us to cover in future weeks. And we'll see you next week. Uh, Rob, do you have any going away words? Any going away dad jokes? Ah. Oh, you, you can't put someone on the line like that. All right. Well, away dad jokes. I, uh, <laughs> I heard that, um, you know, I uh, wanted to get into a school for learning how to do uh, how to become a marionette. Um, but it's the, the, the standards are so high to get in. But you know what? Uh, maybe I know someone that could pull some strings for me. Oh, that was good. Right on the fly right there. Give it up to Rob.